Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Fiji bundled out of Vegas 7s. Online budget consultations from Tuesday. And Fijians urged to speak out on mental health. From the studios of FBC Suva, Amrita Saga. Fiji Airways 7 team has again suffered at the hands of the All Blacks after being bundled out of the Las Vegas 7s Cup quarterfinals this afternoon. Going down 19 to 14, the loss has created a huge dent in Fiji's bid to win the series and gain top speed for Olympic qualification. Melita Vanga with the details. New Zealand and of course Coming into the match knowing they will have to dig deep to have a chance to beat the All Blacks, the Fiji 7 side had a slow start with New Zealand striking early. For Mulia, Mulia on the angle, nobody can put down Sione Mulia. Fiji was made to work hard as playmaker Jerry Tuai made a man's to score his first try with Fiji taking the lead at halftime. Steady through Darren Alangi, Darren Alangi, hit hard by Karoy. Good chopping tackle, but look out, little Jerry's in the house. The little tornado, too wild. In the second half, both teams came out firing. However, it was Tuai again, mesmerizing the defense to extend Fiji's lead. Tuai again, Tuai gets through. Look at Jerry go, Tuai! Oh, he's something else. Jerry Tuai! With four minutes left on the clock, New Zealand made a stunning comeback to steal the win. G with some venom in these shots, Mulia. Mulia, Sione has... He's second. New Zealand looking to hit the lead and they're going to do it through who else? Fiji tried to mount a late surge in the dying stages of the match, but it was the All Blacks who stood tall with their strong defense. Melita Wanga, FBC Sports. A 40-year-old woman is the latest road fatality after the vehicle she was traveling in veered off the road and hit a steel railing. The alleged incident occurred along the Queen's Road near Naevo Evo, Singatoka, yesterday. A student in her 20s alleged, is alleged to have been driving the vehicle. The victim was a passenger with four others who, was traveling, who were traveling to Nandi when the suspect allegedly lost control of the vehicle. The suspect is in, is in custody as the investigation continues. The road death toll currently stands at 11 compared to 8 for the same period last year. Now, with three months to go before the 2019-2020 national budget is announced, the Ministry of Economy continues its round of consultations, gathering the voices of the people to the decision-making table. For the first time ever, the Ministry is taking its consultations to social media on March 5th, 6th and 7th. Eleanor Trangayview reports. Three online national budget consultations on social media network Facebook has been planned. It's basically a live online session with the Minister for Economy, Ayaz Sayed Kayum. On Tuesday, we have students, uh, high school students, specific dedicated time for them, where they can, you know, beforehand, they can send in any questions, comments they have, and then we'll go live on Tuesday uh, with them, interact with them in, in, in real time. And then the following day will be with tertiary students, uh, and, uh, and in the evening, that's more in the evening time, and then the following day will be general public. The online sessions will be open to the public for questions, comments, suggestions and feedback. It's a much uh, better way of getting better reach. Uh, as we've seen, a lot of the young people also, uh, they spend a lot of time on Facebook, so we thought there's a better way of reaching out to them. And uh, of course, with the high school students, some of them are doing it as a project uh, with their schools and raising issues as a school. Uh, and then, of course, they can go online and, and raise those issues with us. The first of the three public in-person consultations was held in Lambasa yesterday. Next Saturday it will be held in Lotoka and then the following Saturday in Suva. The ministry is also accepting written submissions. People have until the uh, 26th 
of, uh, of April to give in any written submissions or even going on online or email to give any written submissions they may have. All submissions will be factored into the compilation of the 2019-2020 national budget, which will be announced on Friday, June 7th. Eleanor Turangai View, FBC News. Lifeline Fiji is a suicide prevention helpline and counselling service. In a report published last year, the NGO highlighted that each year, on average, 124 people commit suicide in Fiji. Lifeline Fiji's director, Jeremiah Merikula, is urging Fijians struggling with mental health to use the services available, which could potentially save their life. Maggie Boyle reports. In the last five years, 630 Fijians have committed suicide. Lifeline Fiji X is a referral agency uh, that stabilizes those who are going through crisis and refer them to available uh, services that are available that could help them. With the toll-free helpline 132454, Lifeline Fiji on average deals with 18 calls a day from Fijians in need of help. Now, with our young kids nowadays, they're much more vulnerable into uh, suicidal ideation in uh, rethinking and thinking about all these things. Uh, and uh, just last year, we had um, three cases of completed suicide within a span of seven days. Last week, an 11-year-old primary school student became the country's latest suicide victim. For Medical Services Pacific, which manages the child helpline, sometimes having someone to talk to is all they may need. If your teen is experiencing sadness, um, feeling alone, um, they start isolating themselves, they show showing signs of stress, even stress from schoolwork, and you see something amiss or they don't seem right, you need to reach out and have those um, difficult discussions with them. Police have confirmed that 13 people have committed suicide this year. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Still to come, sea ferries may solve traffic woes. And millions spent on rural electrification project details after the break. Fiji Roads Authority is looking at other transportation alternatives that the public can use. FRA Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says traffic congestion has become a major issue and other methods need to be introduced. Catherine Krishna reports the FRA is looking at the use of ferries or small boats. Why is it there a ferry going across the water to Lamy? The Fiji Roads Authority says the use of ferries and small boats may just be the next option to solve traffic wars between the Suva to Lamy corridor. Three kilometres from Lamy to uh, Sakuna Park. You could put a car park in Lamy and you could put people on a ferry and bring them across into Sakuna Park. You can do the same in the Sura. It's a lot longer distance. It's probably 25 kilometres on, on the water, but it's still it's all inside the reef. The chief executive says this move will not only benefit the public, but the economy as well. The only alternative is to put more roads into Suva and into the other city, towns and cities as well. Um, and the cost of a new road from, from Rewa Bridge into central Suva is astronomical. If we put a new road into Suva, it eases the congestion in Suva, but back in Nasuri it will be even worse. So it's, it's not a holistic solution. Jonathan Moore says they're closely working with the Ministry of Infrastructure to ensure this initiative progresses. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. The government has invested significantly in the rural electrification program. To date, over $100 million has been spent on electrifying the rural population. Now, Eleanor Trangeview reports the government will not rest until all households in the country have access to power. Approximately 25,165 households are already benefiting from the rural electrification program. Today, 30 more households join these statistics. An investment of more than 70,000 was made for the great extension of house wiring project. It will provide a reliable supply of electricity to 30 households, that is approximately 150 people 24 hours a day, seven days a week, God willing. 
Nukulo settlement, about four kilometers outside of Savu Savu town, is today enjoying reliable power supply through the commissioning of the Mbalanga Rural Electrification Project. So ladies and gentlemen and friends, enjoy and use the electricity supply wisely for good things, for educational things, for things that lead to a better life, things that lead to better educational, economic and social activities that allow you to pursue a higher standard of living. For 17 years, residents of the settlement have been living without a sustainable electricity supply. Good, good. Because the light is here. Rice cooker, electric jug, and frying pan, washing machine, there's every, everything. Eh? This year, an additional 6,623 households are earmarked to get electricity through grid extension projects and the installation of solar home system projects. Eleanor Turangaivu, FBC News. A group of talented dancers from around the country will represent Fiji to the Hip Hop International South Pacific Dance Competition to be held in New Zealand next month. The Mana Dance Group that consists of 20 dancers are refining their best skills to perform in front of thousands of audience as well as to compete for the top spot to reach the World Hip Hop Challenge. Akusita Tale reports. Less than five weeks remain for these dancers to be on their best form representing our country on the regional hip-hop stage. It's a challenge for all of us who are part of the crew, a challenge for our families as well, but uh, we're all pretty positive that we'll make it across and we'll go on that stage and make Fiji proud. The choreographer says the set and routine that will be performed will consist of what hip-hop means to young Fijians nowadays and what its culture is to Fiji. We're trying to show the hip-hop dance culture in Fiji. It has really changed from what it used to be back in the day. Um, right now it's pretty diverse because of the influence of technology and uh, social media. So, but we also want to stay true to our culture and who we are as Fijians. The performers who many have to balance work, school and life are all excited to show the Pacific what Fiji is made of. Great privilege, uh, especially being uh, given the chance to be part of the crew, uh, because there were a lot of people who auditioned, uh, and uh, to be given this opportunity it was uh, definitely a great honor. Just try your best, anything is possible, like literally anything, just pray to the Lord, just ask Him to bless all your plans and you never know, it might come successful. The Mata Group hopes to gain as much exposure on the international front and ensure upon their return they're able to pass on newfound skills and choreography to other local dancers. The winner from the South Pacific Islands competition will represent the region to the World Hip Hop Dance Championship in USA in August. Akosit Tali, FBC News. Dreams do come true. This is the sentiment shared by a 37-year-old Tarayasi Leka, who recently opened up his barber shop in Namakanandi. Tabs, as he's known to by many, worked at various resorts and restaurants in Nandi for more than 10 years before taking a risk and starting up his own barber shop, something he was always passionate about. Philippe Naikaso has more. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Tarayasi Leka, a father of five, has accomplished a lot in just a very little time, opening his own hairdressing shop in Namaka, known as Nomu Baba, which is now a popular spot for many. When I was working at the resort, uh, at my free time, I used to cut the staff's hair and uh, sometimes uh, cut the guests' hair. So from there, and I realized uh, I've been living too long in Nandi, and I find that... Um, None of the Itaukeis are cutting hair, so I decided that why don't I do it? You know? Tebs realized his hairdressing talent when he was in class six and worked on mastering his craft by cutting his family, friends and relatives hair. But despite joining the tourism industry and not pursuing his dream, Taresi had always visioned that one day he would open his own barber shop. Uh, I was there for five months and uh, in two weeks, I was so fortunate that uh, I got uh, invited by the Fiji military force to come and cut at the, the, the army barrack at uh, Black Rock in Utuolebu. And since that, they've been inviting me to go and uh, cut hair for them. And that boosts uh, the business uh, uh, 
for that moment in time. And then uh, I found this place. Uh, I believe, as I've said, uh, uh, if we acknowledge God in our lives, He will direct our path. And I sincerely believe in that. With only a chair and just a few equipment, when he first opened the shop, Tarayasi was determined to work towards his dream. Looking back, an emotional Tarayasi says he could not have accomplished his dream with the support of his family and friends who kept pushing him over the two years when he opened his barber shop. Still, I'm still in tourism industry, but serving my own people. I've got people that come in here from abroad. Uh, yeah. So they really appreciate the service. So, yeah, and uh, for that, I tell all my boys as well what I've learned from them to apply it uh, to everyone that comes in and have a backup. Yeah, planning to do more. Uh, it's basically just serving uh, people. It's my hobby, and I like doing that. With five barbers now working with him at Nomu Baba, Tarayasi says that it was a good investment which is now earning more than $1,000 monthly. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Hope for Vegas 7's win in tatters. And star striker raises concern on drug issues. All this in sports after the break. Dollar, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Seni Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coraco, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. It was a bad day for the Fiji Airways 7 side as they suffered consecutive losses on day two of the Las Vegas 7th tournament. Before going down to the All Blacks in the Cup quarterfinals, the side earlier lost to Australia in their last pool match. Here are the highlights from the match. Another big tackle. Knocks the ball free and Hutchison looks to the outside. Here he goes. Kick a boom. Gerald Skelton. Reply here, Fiji. 2 I. Numbers to the left, two I goes round the outside, does it all oh, himself. Jerry Tua. Advantage as well. Skelton comes short side. Here they go again. The green and gold. Holland over to Kennywell. Simon Kennywell brings it back inside for Droni Sinikula. No one's gonna get close to Polar. Droni Sinikula or have they? The series. There's the offload and go now for Veilawa. Veilawa! 19 plays, 15 kick to come. Quinn into the action. Holland! The captain on the angle. Louis Holland is going to win it for the green and gold. The first time. Host and defending champions of the Las Vegas 7th tournament, the USA, has stamped their mark again as they dismantle South Africa to book a spot in the semi-final. The side lived up to the expectations of their home crowd as they ran away with a 29-10 victory. Here are the highlights from the match. Good over the break now. Yep, there you go. They go quickly. Danny Barrett made in America. Pinkelman wriggles for him. Thomasine, open space. Stephen Thomasine racing for the line. Thomasine goes the distance. The USA, back-to-back -back tries. Thank you very much. Isles goes into fast forward mode, but Van O'Clock has him. Ball is available, Thomasine in support. Beautiful ball over the top, Yosefo! Big Martin Yosefo races away. They've taken the lunch money from South Africa. 
and up for 17. Who's on the field? Yosefo. Big Martin Yosefo tracking a few players, and Isles picks up and goes in the corner. San Diego Legion in Major League Rugby competition, and this kick is classic. La Utah runs on this one. Fantastic. He salutes the crowd. They retain it. Hedo shifts it. Floats one over the top. Stedman Hans gets in the corner. Meanwhile, in the Cup semis tomorrow, USA will take on New Zealand in the first semi final, while Samoa meets Argentina in the second semi final. Fiji's Wonder Boy and Wellington Phoenix star striker Roy Krishna has weighed in on the ongoing drug issues with players in Fiji. Krishna says players should think twice before taking drugs, as this will taint the reputation of the sport in the country. Corey Tandalala reports. The darling of the Fijian Fiji football captain Roy Krishna says players need to adopt a different mind approach in order to deal with the drug ordeal. It's harmful not for you personally, but for the whole family. You know, so you, you know if you're taking that, you know, just think about your family. You know, you've been there through thick and thin, and you know, if you're gifted, you know, to play football, you know, this is something where you can give back to your family. The former Lombasa striker says a no drug policy will only be able to nip this issue in the bud. Uh, so yeah. Drug is something is not uh, allowed in, in, in sport. So, you know, I think uh, that's not my job to, to look into that. And uh, I think Fiji football will come with something big and, and hopefully this can change ASAP. Meanwhile, Roy Krishna was given a special recognition award by the Fiji Football Association in Nandi last night for his outstanding competition in the A-League in New Zealand. The award was the first of its kind in Fiji football. Kore Tandulala. FBC Sports. Fifteen individuals were recognized in the Fiji Football Awards night in Nandi yesterday. Fiji FA President Rajesh Patel says this was a great opportunity to recognize players, officials, participation and support throughout 2018. Koroi Tandalala once again. The Fiji FA Awards was a buzz with well-known players, officials and fans in attendance. Scooping the top two awards of the night was Kavaya Wanga and Chotivini Tambua. I must be happy right now even though I'm far from home, but uh, I know they are at home, they are really happy. The Fiji women's football was recognized as the team of the year after winning silver in the Oceania match last year. Reaching the semi-final after which we knew we already had the silver, we only had New Zealand to beat to qualify. Meanwhile, Lotoka coach Kamal Swami was awarded as the coach of the year. I think I, I must congratulate my wife uh, and my daughter Angel. Uh, without their support, I wouldn't have been able to do this. Uh, they always, uh, uh, they, they are always behind me and they have been always supporting. PGFA Chief Executive Mohammed Yusuf says they want to see more players and officials recognized for their achievements this year. Kori Tandulala. FBC Sports. The Sun Wolves created a major upset, cruising to a 30 to 15 victory against the Chiefs in the Super Rugby match yesterday. It's the first time the Tokyo-based unit have won an away game, leaving the 2012-2013 champion embarrassed as they remain winless after three rounds. The Lotoka football side put on a strong performance to beat Nasinu four goals to one in its Vodafone Premier League match this afternoon. Lotoka took the nil lead one nil at half time. Colonio Sivoki, Seirusi, Nalambu, Benjamin Totori and Samuel Androru scored a goal each for the Blues. Nasino's lone goal was scored by Manasa Levadi through a penalty. Here are the highlights. So free kick, Colonio Sivoki with his trademark free kick. Turns, curls it straight in. Samuel Androru turning inside. Androru to Benjamin Totori. Air right into the front end. Seirusi, Nalambu. A good run by him. Seirusi Mbokini taps it away and the header crossed by Tony Naramba. Out of play and it's given a penalty by Manasa Levadi. Another chance. Let's see what he does. And this time he does... Uh, Put it back. Tatori inside the box. Still Benjamin Tatori turns and Benjamin Tatori. Benjamin Tatori. Benjamin plays a neat little pass and Samuel Adrundru on side again. Samuel turns. Still Samuel Adrundru. Then Samuel Adrundru turns away from Mohamed Alza. The silver football side defeated Nandi four goals to three in its Vodafone Premier League campaign in front of its home crowd at ANZ Stadium this afternoon. Both the teams tied one all at the breather. 
side floats a long high one. Ruen chested away as Rusiate turns on a beautiful drive by Rusiate Matero Renga. King Berovo, Berovo comes in with another deep cross, and this time a better header from Michael Bosso. Meli with a chance there, cuts it back in field. Meli with a chance again, and Meli Dondro in the fourth minute of play. After the third, it was going. Now they got five to six, and Shahil Dev and Meli Dondro following through. So Unsuba coming to attack again. Meli Dondro with a chance to make his hat trick, but he squares it to Ratu Anare and Ratu Anare. We saw that in that game against Henderson as Nandi come into it. Samela drives and it hits the side netting. Samela, Samisoni rather, to Ilawak to Ivan Kumar. Ivan on that far touch line side loses it to Samisoni to Ilawaki and they find in Tito Bondaiwanga then Rusiati Matarenga and I said Rusiati Matarenga has pulled one back in the 37th minute of play. Poor play by Ivan Kumar losing it on that far side. Cloudy periods with some showers and afternoon thunderstorms were experienced over the eastern part and interior of the larger islands. It was fine weather that prevailed elsewhere, with showers and thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. We take a look at the west, a change in weather as Sunday was greeted with cloudy conditions. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, cloudy conditions was experienced from the morning with heavy rain after midday. However, the weather improved by the evening. And up north, similar dull conditions prevailed. You can expect northeasterly winds 10 to 15 knots, moderate to rough seas and moderate southerly swells. There will be poor visibility in areas of heavy showers. Now for the tides, high tide will be at 5.20 a.m. with low tide at 10.59 p.m. Sunrise will be at 6.10 a.m. As for tomorrow, unfavourable weather conditions will be experienced throughout the country. And the further outlook as we look for Tuesday, although there may be sun in some parts of the country, the best advice is don't forget to take an umbrella with you to work and school ready for a new week. Recapping the main stories, online budget consults, on consultations from Tuesday and Fijians urged to speak out on mental health. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, onto our poll question segment. This week we're asking, do you think there should be more suicide prevention services available in the country? You can visit our FBC website to answer. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. Or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka, Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lombasa. I'm Sona Me, Nasori Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Singer Line. Mirchi FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Kritika from Jax Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot.